Hello and welcome to Louise Singleton Creations. In today's video I'm making two different kinds of journals. I'm going to be painting with resin to make a flower scene on one of them. On the other one I'm going to be using a photograph from my wedding in a very special way to make it into a transparent journal cover. I will also be showing you how I make my gold edges on my journal. So there's lots of tips and tricks today and I hope you enjoy! First of all, I'm going to show you how I made my journal front with the transparent photograph. And this part won't take long at all because it's very, very simple. So the first job is to just resize your photograph on some photo editing software. You don't need to do anything else to it, just make it the right size as you would normally do if you were printing out a photograph. It needs to be about three or four millimetres smaller than the mould all the way around. And then instead of printing it onto photo paper, you just need to print it onto transparency paper for overhead projectors. Make sure you've got one that's compatible with your printer, whether it's inkjet or um, laser, a laser printer. And then what I do is I laminate it. So here you just see me put it into a laminating pouch and feeding it through the laminator. If you don't have those things, you don't have to use that. You could get some sticky backed plastic and cover both sides and then trim around the edges, not right up to the edge of your um, acetate, but leave a couple of millimetres so that there's a seal. And it's the same with this, what, which I'm doing now. I'm going to cut around the edge, but leave a couple of millimetres so that you keep the seal and the resin can't get in. And then the next job is to mix up your epoxy resin. I'm using total cast epoxy resin, but most varieties will do the trick just the same. And yeah, I'm just filling it up, making sure it's completely covered, running um, my spatula around the edge to make sure there's no bubbles trapped. Then I'll use my heat gun to get rid of the bubbles. And then it's basically a case of putting the picture into the resin. I say basically it's not really that simple. The thing is it's this bit is quite messy so make sure your table is really protected and what I do is I lay it on top of the resin and then I gently press down all over and the good thing about this being transparent is you can see if there's any air bubbles trapped underneath. It really is a different story if you're doing a picture that's not transparent because it's hard to know whether you've got any air trapped underneath. But with this you can really see it. So you need to kind of push the bubbles outwards until they escape if you have got any air trapped in there. And then what you need to do is press down gently on the edges and the resin will come up from underneath and round the top and then just spread it out over the top and as you can see I'm making quite a mess but I don't mind I quite like making a mess <laughs> and then once that's in and you're happy with it make sure you get rid of any air bubbles with your heat gun and if you want to disguise the edge of the photo where it meets the spine you, you can cover it with glitter like I did and it kind of disguises that harsh line down the left hand side. What I'm doing here is just I keep pressing it down because it kept floating up again. And here I'm just going to add some chunky glitter and really I should have waited until it was much thicker because it kind of all floated away. And that's my fault for rushing. I knew it would happen and, you know, I just rushed and regretted it. So, yeah, let it thicken up a bit first. Right, now we're on to the second journal cover, which is my Lavender Garden inspired cover. And with this one, it's going to be completely different. I'm going to be doing a bit of kind of like painting, painting with resin. That's how I thought about it when I was doing it. It really did feel just like painting a picture rather than the usual resin method that I would use. 
So the pigments I'm using are all Arteza pigments and I think this one was the periwinkle one and it's beautiful. You can't tell from this ang that angle but it was kind of, it had like violet tones in it and it was so pretty. And so what I'm doing now is I'm using an old silicon mould which ha was one with the little domes in and I'm using that as a palette and mixing up all my colours that I want to use in my little palette. So all these colours came in one set. So I'm not I'm not going to try and remember the names of all the colours because <laughs> um, I can't. Anyway, if you wanted to get these colours, which really are beautiful, you would need to get the set. And I do have a discount code for this um for anything from Arteza so if you want to check that out in the description and then you can get 10% off while I'm on the subject of the different products and the links that I usually put in the description things have changed a little bit what I normally do is give an individual link to every product that I use and it does take me a long long time to find all the links and put them all in the description but what I've got now is an Amazon storefront actually I've got three Amazon storefronts I've got one in the UK one in the United States and one in Canada so if you look in my description you'll see links that will take you directly to the storefront which is for you and when you get there you'll find that I have a list I've got lots of different lists all different categories but I'm going to have one category just for this video so everything that I'm using in this video if it's from Amazon will be in that list and then it's nice and easy for you to just scroll through them and purchase anything if you want to and it's easier for me because it means I don't have to go getting all those links every time Right, back to painting the flowers. I'm obviously not using a paintbrush because that would really, the resin would really wreck it. I'm using a cocktail stick and just dipping it into the um, different coloured resins and applying it into the base coat of resin. I really enjoy using this method for flowers because once you've applied the colours, they kind of disperse naturally over time you can walk away and come back and it's a completely different picture they do move the colors really do move around quite a lot um and i was actually expecting them to move around more than they did and so although i'm happy with this i do love the way it's turned out i did want it to be a little bit more blended and you just never can tell what it's going to do because what I'm doing here is exactly the same as how I did the smaller one which you will see soon I made a smaller one to go with this I'm not showing you how to make it because it was exactly the same as this but the result is different even though I did it in exactly the same way and that's the thing with resin it's always a surprise how something's going to turn out you never can really truly no until it's finished right so the resin's really thickened up now and I had some left in the bottom of the cup so what I've used is some of my purple glitter from resin pro and I will put a link to that as well and mixed it in with the resin and you can see it's so gloopy and it had, all, it had almost gone too far to be able to do this but I just caught it in time and it does work better if you let your resin get really really thick and then add your glitter and apply it in the way I'm doing it now and it stays in position it won't go all over the place like it did on my first um, journal cover that you saw <laughs> Right, I left it to cure until the next day and now it's time to demold it. And I did try to give you a good look at it, but my light was shining on it and that's the problem with resin, you get all the reflections. So don't worry, I'll give you a proper look at it at the end and I'll think about getting a different light. <laughs> To finish it off nicely, I decided to colour the edges with gold marker pen. This is a pilot pen and it works 
quite well. It's not my, fi not my favourite of pens, um, but it's an affordable one. And yeah, some of the um, gold marker pens you can get look really great, but I've never trekked myself to them because they're just so expensive. And maybe one day when I'm feeling rich, uh, I will start to get better marker pens. But this does the trick nicely and it just finishes it off. And I'm just cleaning it up with a wet wipe and ready for the next step. My favourite part of any project is the embellishments and giving it that finishing touch that just makes it a little bit more special. And so what I decided to do was to put some little eyelets in the holes just to finish off those holes and make them look a little bit smarter and a little just more special somehow. So what I'm doing is putting some E6000 glue in there because it's that just works really well with the resin and I'm popping some uh, gold eyelets in but the thing is what I hadn't realised at the time was the eyelets were deeper than the hole so they stuck out underneath and that's not actually a problem because I've got a tool to crimp the eyelets down into place. But if I'd realised before I put the glue in, I wouldn't have bothered with the glue. So with this one, it, it came out thicker. I must have just put a bit more resin in and the eyelets fitted well. So I, I thought it was just going to be the same, but it wasn't. Anyway... I've got my crocodile tool now, which is a fantastic tool and it punches holes and it also sets eyelets nicely. So that's what I'm going to do now. I'm just going to press the eyelets with the crocodile and it will just keep them into in position nicely. You know, I always complain about getting older, but the thing is, the older you get, the longer you've had to collect lots and lots of crafting stash, lots and lots of tools and amazing things. And I used to do so much paper crafting a few years ago. And this was one of the tools I got when I used to do paper crafting. And, you know, you wouldn't believe the amount of stuff I've got in boxes <laughs> that I've collected over the years. And I cannot part with it. I really can't. I see people online selling the stuff and decluttering, but I can't do it. I've got to hold on to it just in case I need it one day. So, yeah, this crocodile was from my paper crafting days, and it really is excellent. So they're all in position now, and we're ready for the next step. Right, I bought some journal refills from Amazon, which fit fairly well. I would like them to be slightly smaller, but they're not a bad fit. Uh, the only problem is that they don't have rounded corners and the corners were sticking out on the um, spine side. So very luckily, I happened to mention to my husband that I'd put a really cool tool for cutting corners uh, in my wish list. <laughs> And I said, uh, just in case, you know, you you want to buy me anything when it's my birthday in December, you can look on my wish list and then you can choose anything you like, maybe something from the top and, you know, anytime you want. <laughs> and um, I think he realised I was hinting and bought me it and it's called a, it's a crocodile corner cruncher. And it came, it was a surprise, I didn't know I was getting it. And so I was so chuffed and it came just in time to finish this project. So I've cut all the corners and it's ready to put it all together. I've made a back piece and what I did was I photocopied the front and um, stuck the paper onto some card. I, oh, actually, I laminated the paper and then stuck it onto the card and that made a nice shiny back to go with the shiny front. And so now I'm going to put it all together with some book rings. As I said before, everything I'm using is in that category list in my on my Amazon storefront. You just need to click the link to my storefront in the description.
These book rings are really good, but sometimes they're a bit stiff and they can be quite hard to open and close, which is a good thing because you need them to be strong to hold your book together, but it can be a bit fiddly. Uh, so I've just done the one. Once you've done the one, it's really easy to do all the others, but I only filmed myself doing the first one because it took me quite a long time. <laughs> So now the book's assembled, it's time to make the gold edges on the paper, which is obviously not something that you have to do, but as a child I was al always really interested when I was looking at books, you know, old books or Bibles, and you could see the gold edges. I always thought it was wonderful, and I've never had a go at doing it, so I thought, let's try it. And so this is what I'm doing. This is my first ever attempt and it did turn out really nice. I've got some gold calligraphy ink, Dr. Ma Dr. P. H. Martins, and that's in the list as well. And it worked so, so, so well, this ink. So I'm really pleased I tried that before I tried it with paint. And I've folded some paper and just hooked it over both sides of the book to protect the covers and I'm going to take a soft brush and just paint on the ink to the outer edges and what you do need to do is squeeze the book closed really really tight so that the ink doesn't seep between the pages and as long as you don't put too much ink on your brush and you do quick soft movements it stays just on the surface and it will leak down and you'll see at the end how well it worked. I'm really sorry about the camera angle it's a constant problem for me when I'm doing videos I can either you can't see what I'm doing or I make sure you can see and then I can't see <laughs> but for this I really needed to see what I was doing so unfortunately it's just a little bit out of your view but hopefully you'll get the idea you can already see how well that ink's working. It's got quite a nice shine to it. I actually bought that ink to try it on the edge of coasters because I loved the colour of the gold, but it doesn't work quite so well on the coasters. It's not bad, but you, what you need to do, because it doesn't st seem to stick to the resin, is you need to do a layer of pen first and then do the ink on top, and it does go over pen nicely, and then you get... A really nice colour but it, it's whether or not you can be bothered to do that but I'm glad I got it now because even though I don't use it for my coasters it's turned out really good for the edges of my books. Once you've finished inking all the edges and allowed it to dry all you need to do is flick through the book and check that None of the pages have stuck together. Well, they will have done. Some of them will have stuck together. So, but they come apart really easy. It doesn't. They don't tear or anything. You just need to separate them, and they come apart ever so easily. But it is good. A good idea to go through each and every page if you can be patient enough to do it. And once that's done, it's all finished. And I do think that those gold edges make such a big difference. What do you think? I'm really happy with that. There are other ways of doing this and it was my first attempt at doing the gold edges. Uh, so if you want to get some more information and some more details about it, you should do a search on YouTube because there's lots out there. I've seen it done with um, watered down acrylic paint and that works well as well. I just really did like the effects from that um, calligraphy ink. I repeated the process for the other journal with the photograph on the front and I think they turned out really beautiful. I finally got some good natural daylight so I don't have the light glaring down so now you can actually see <laughs> a little bit more detail of how they turned out. I'd love to know what you think so please let me know in the comments. If you've enjoyed the video, give me a thumbs up and if you haven't already subscribed, please do so and then you'll get to get a notification if you ring the bell next time I upload a video. Thank you for watching and I will see you again soon. Bye for now.